Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 19 of the Game Groups Podcast, the all-encompassing weekly gaming podcast from us, the Good Night Groups. My name is Matt, and today I'm joined by Mike. He's back again, Josh and Paul. But guys, let's just get right into it. Instead of asking you all how you're doing this week, I want to ask you what the peak of your week has been Paul, what is the best thing that happened to you this week, sir? You look like you're not prepared. I hope you are because I'm asking you first. You guys know Peak of the Week comes every single week, so you should be prepared. I'm not complaining, though. Let's just get right into it. Paul, what's the best thing that happened to you this week? I wrote answers to questions. I promise I did. Uh, and then I forgot that to do Peak of the Week, as always. Um, but you know what? Uh, it was a, it was a good week. I'm just give me like two seconds. I'm just gonna keep kind of talking, and then uh, you know what, um, Josh? What was the peak of your week? Oh God! <laughs> All right, Paul. We're gonna pull your nuts out of the fire here for this one. Um, so it, honestly, if so, I'm assuming at the end of the year we're gonna have one big like you know game groups podcast year recap we in the year bottom boom new year kind of deal we may ask what was your peak of the year well i'll go ahead and give you that now uh the atlanta braves uh, won Uh. the uh, world series and uh, that's gonna be tough to top for a a long long time how long had it been 1995 i was a year old okay Wow. I was a year old, and that's the only major championship that Atlanta sports has won in years. Uh, Almost got there, but, you know, Tom Brady. Um, So (laughs) pretty pretty big peak of the week, I got to say. It was, uh, oh, God damn, it was wonderful. Well, congratulations. I'm happy for you. You and I have both had championships this year. The Milwaukee Bucks won the NBA Finals earlier this year. Look at us go. Maybe they'll repeat. Right. Maybe the I'm, Braves will I'm, repeat. Okay, Paul. Uh, I'm ready P- now. Peak of Paul's week was getting his nuts taken out of the fire. No. Yes. Uh, that is go. generally, if that ever comes up, that is a peak <laughs> of your week for sure. Um, especially around Christmas, you know, chestnuts roasting on open fire, a lot of opportunities. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, I did, I did say last week that I was going to uh, check out uh, one of our famous national parks here in Ontario, yeah. Algonquin Park. That was awesome. We saw a moose. Whoa. wild moose how um, stereotypical which, it was yeah it was awesome like, neither <laughs> rachel or i had ever seen a moose uh there's like the toronto zoo has some some moose but like they're always kind of at the back they have a huge enclosure and they're always kind of like way at the back um but this was a, a close-up moose it was probably maybe 15 feet away it was a, a cow and uh she was just like standing there. all these people were pulled to the side of the road and she was just standing there like take like a, drinking out of a stream everyone was taking photos Aww. of her she was kind of like mugging the camera really a really cool experience uh and then we told some people who worked there and they were like oh yeah cool we fucking see that every day um <laughs> but that was that was cool uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had a good time. And also, I will say, I did um, a, a side note to peak of the week is that I did buy into some my first cryptocurrency. So uh, you know, making those making those crypto millions. And of course, it's a, a weird dog meme shit coin. So uh, I'm either going to lose all my money or I'm going to become rich beyond my wildest dreams. And there's no no thing in between. <laughs> <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> So, Paul, are you officially Canadian now that a moose has graced your presence? I mean, I think, uh, according to my birth certificate, I have always been officially Canadian. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, uh, well, you know, I definitely think... We can, never, that, we can never be sure. Yeah, but I think this is really what puts you over the edge. It's like uh, the coronation, you know, sort of. <laughs> honestly, yeah. I, I felt something in my heart. Uh, I, I, everyone stood there at one moment. We all put our hands at our sides. Not in our hearts, because that's what we do in Canada. We put our hands at our sides. And we all sang, oh, Canada, uh, <laughs> shed a tear, the moose shed a tear. <laughs> a Mountie stopped by. Cracked open in a Molson's. It was, it oh, was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was, uh, it was a beautiful thing. The Toronto Blue Jays uh, drove by in their bus and saluted us. The whole thing. <laughs> Mike, the peak of your week, sir. What was the best thing that happened to you this week? Uh, this week has been quite a valley, um, if I have to be <laughs> frank. Um, last week, it was a good of... week last week. Yeah, last week was great. Um, and unfortunately, I can't really tell you what the peak of my week was last week because, you know, Vegas. Um, but... <laughs> Ayo! Stri- strippers. Um, I guess this week, I'm, I'm getting my car tomorrow, uh, which has led oh. to probably the shit end of my week of five minutes ago when I fucked up getting my auto insurance. So, um, you know. I'm getting a car, but I have to figure some shit out before then. So is this a is this a new car, Mike, or have you had a car? You yeah. had a car before, right? Yep. 
Uh, is this a, it'll be say, my second. Can you say card. what it is? Is it like an exciting purchase? Uh, it's a Mustang, electric Mustang. Dang. Oh, fuck, I love those things. That's really no. cool. <laughs> Sick. Love that. So cool. Now, before we move on, Josh, is that a hot dog or is that your leg? Uh, this is a, a very hairy hot dog, actually. <laughs> or is it rather, sizzling bacon? That, rather that large. didn't answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Trending. <laughs> oh wait, my peak of the week. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Matt, 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 you, Matt's, Matt's had a really, really, really this bad week. He just looked <laughs> a barrel through this. So I actually wrote my peak of the week is tomorrow being Friday. <laughs> That's my peak of the week. That's a uh, sad, sad peak, my friend. Uh, it has, it has been a week. It's back in the workforce. The second week, I feel like the second week you've already you d- you've done some training on the job. Now they're sort of really starting to throw stuff at you while you're also like, I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. They haven't told you what they expect of you, but just that they, but yes. you get the vibe they're starting to expect yes. you to know things. Um, yeah. Being given responsibility, not, not something I enjoy. <laughs> Uh, no, what? <laughs> so, so work isn't great for that. You no, know, it's not. Okay, yeah. let's move on. Trending topics. <laughs> In trending topics, I give our panelists a choice between three, not two, not four, but three search terms. They have to Wait, tell Matt, me seven. Three search terms. <laughs> they have to tell me which term they think got the most searches over the last seven days. There's your seven. Dude, uh, this is where we could insert the ring. The ring girl. Via stat, uh, okay. Via stats from Google Trends, we'll play three quick rounds. I'm trying to up the production value here, Matt. Okay. Can I'm we get the right? Sometimes you've offered us four four options, like when we I've never remembered. Four That's true. I, I we did have one one time yeah. we played this game with four options, and Mike has never let it go. <laughs> no. <laughs> Every time the we, rules. We're filming the show, we'll be doing something else entirely. You'll be like, remember four options? <laughs> Round one Elden oh, Ring, shit. Call of Duty Vanguard, or Battlefield 2042? Battlefield 2042. Elden Ring. <laughs> I don't know. It Elden bad. Ring. Elden Ring. Call of Duty Vanguard. No one is correct. <laughs> it's doo doo, bro. Had the lowest Why? chance. Why? Nothing it's came doo-doo. out. Round two. <laughs> Diablo four, Overwatch two, or Patch nine point one point five. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Uh, o- Overwatch two. It's got to be. Uh, yeah, I'm saying Overwatch two. Yeah, same. You're all right. It was Overwatch two. Patch nine point one point five actually came in yeah, second. Boys. Wow. Second over Diablo 4. Yikes. <laughs> Point uh, five bad. Really... <laughs> All right. People are Final thirsty round. for those patches. Chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry? Oh, damn. Neapolitan. Strawberry. Uh, uh, strawberry. It's the best. I'm going for my, my man, chocolate. <laughs> Paul wins. It's chocolate. Strawberry did come in second, though. I was shocked uh-huh. by that. Although, I'm shocked too. I always thought strawberry would come to death. It Dead is a life. fruit. That is true. Um, but vanilla and chocolate are also a lot of things. They are. Beyond ice cream. I like vanilla. I, I love. <laughs> and nothing else. Just ice cream. Yeah. Just ice cream. That's it. I, I love <laughs> strawberry ice cream, but I also love vanilla ice cream. And, I, and I, chocolate ice cream is just okay. Why are we all You're talking about. Wait, why a... are we talking about ice cream now? This wasn't ice cream. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> Josh said Neapolitan. You picture Neapolitan I, flavors. I, I literally he put it, it in our break. He just inceptioned yeah. us. <laughs> he did. All right. You see Josh like unhook like a fucking suitcase full of technology. I did it for <laughs> right. Josh, that top on your desk is not stopping. What is right. oh, that's weird. Oh. Alright, the big question. <laughs> this week, Niantic announced that Harry Potter Wizards Unite would exit app stores on December 6th before completely shutting down on January 21st, 2022. Harry Potter Wizards Unite is an augmented reality mobile game in which players visit real-world locations where they can encounter and fight against magical creatures, cast spells, and discover hidden secrets. The game was released in June of 2019, and in May this year, it was reported to have a total revenue estimated at $37 million dollars uh, with 20 million downloads. These numbers, specifically the revenue, is extremely poor for a mobile game with this sort of backing and with such a major IP. It's not alone, however. 
Many games from other large properties have entered the AR fray. Games like Jurassic World Alive, Minecraft Earth, The Walking Dead Our World, and The Witcher Monster Slayer, among others, have all come to market without making much noise. So far, One King has ruled above all other AR games for mobile. That, of course, is Pokemon Go, which launched in the summer of 2016. Ah, the summer of 2016. Millions of people enjoyed the fresh air that summer while visiting Pokestops and catching various Pokemon. And to this day, the game still sees a ton of success. Its lifetime revenue currently sits over six and a half billion dollars. And 1.1 billion of that was just this year alone. So like, damn. A lot, a lot of money. So here's the question. Is Pokemon Go just lightning in a bottle? Or can this model work for other properties? Massive IPs have proven that you can't just copy the same exact model and have it work the same way. So if AR can work for other properties, what can be done to make it work? Mike, I'm going to go to you first. I feel like you're going to have something to say on this. I'm, I'm hoping, dear Lord, I hope you have something to say on this. Mike, <laughs> is Pokemon Go just lightning in a bottle? Can this model work for other properties? And if it can work, what do they have to do to make it work? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes, it's lightning in a bottle. It hit once. It's never going to hit again. There's something magical about Pokemon Go when it came out. Um, it was very new. It was very different. There was nothing like it. And after a while, like most mobile games, either you're just going to continue playing it or you realize that what you're doing is actually just chores right. and you're going to stop. Um, I think a lot of the player base in pokemon go realized that myself included i stopped playing it shortly after the summer because it got cold i wasn't going to be walking around outside anymore and when the next summer came back i like started doing it a little bit more uh i had coworkers that would go out on lunch break and walk around and we would do it but like at the end of the day it just felt like chores and i was like i'm i don't need to do chores at work i have work to do that <laughs> um so for me I feel like a lot of people who felt the same way as me aren't going to gravitate to any new AR game unless it's like something really spectacular in a space that they find really interesting. Um, I'm not really surprised that the Harry Potter one wasn't working. Now, Pokemon Go does seem to have some staying power. Um, last week when I was at the hotel casino pool at the Venetian, I was sitting on a one of the lounge chairs kind of just laying there and the guy in front of me on the lounge chair in the next row was sitting there playing Pokemon go. And I was like, what fucking year is it? Um, <laughs> as far as AR goes, I feel like it's just a huge hassle for me. At least if I'm playing a game on my phone, I want the ability to just sit there and play a game on my phone, like in my bed or, um, you know, downstairs on the couch, if I'm going to do that. I don't want to have to move <laughs> and maybe that's just me being lazy. I just think that it's a huge hassle. Uh, I think again, Pokemon go was pushed by the idea of Pokemon. So it hit on the nostalgia, it hit on little kids, it hit on, you know, a huge audience. Yes. Verbiage was a little, <laughs> little bit <skittish. laughs> um, but it got a huge audience. It, uh, it appealed to a lot of people. And the idea of catching Pokemon in the real world may, was, you know, something exciting. Now we've seen how it is. Let's be real. It's clunky. No one actually uses the built-in AR where, you know, you see the Pokemon on the street in front of you because it looks kind of stupid. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't see it working ever again unless they vastly improve the feel the performance how it how you interact with it so that's less of a hassle i'll jump in now um i totally agree i think pokemon go is absolutely the only game uh, that can use this model at this point anything else is just going to look like a knockoff it's the world of warcraft scenario where wow had massive success spawned a few clones even from large ips like warhammer and conan and 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 st stuff like that but it never worked out. Obviously now, 20 years later, WoW is falling apart because of just time and other issues. And I don't think Pokemon Go is going to last 20 years, but similar, I, I see it similar in, in that regard. AR has to be done differently. I'm not sure you can do it differently enough to be super interesting on a phone. 
uh, it also drains your battery a lot. I think that we need to, in order for there to be some serious innovation with AR, it needs to actually be on our face. And I know Paul's going to like this part of the discussion, but I think Google Glass was ahead of its time. I think a large issue for Google Glass was there wasn't enough companion tech that was ready at that point to actually make it work. You, you didn't have apps for Google Glass. Like that sort of stuff just wasn't ready. Now you would have that sort of stuff. I, I imagine a world where you could even have Pokemon Go on your phone speaking to Google Glass where you're seeing the AR in the glasses maybe, but you're throwing the Pokeball with your phone, you know? So they're, they're communicating and you're using both to, to play an AR game. I just think... It's going to be hard to, I, I think there are ways to probably come up with revolutionary ideas for, for the phone, but it's still going to drain battery. It's still going to make you walk around looking at your phone. I just think the idea of having AR on your face and through glasses is what's really going to bring it forward. I don't know when it's going to happen. I feel like people are hesitant to do it because Google Glass failed so badly. Um, but I do think that the time is probably right now. Paul, what do you think? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, you you hit a good point that I think is the big thing with AR is we, we, glasses are so huge. I think a lot of companies are just holding out on that because it's it, there's something nice about creating AR first and having the this like world of AR and these AR experiences and then bringing glasses into it uh, once there's already an established thing. Like you said, with Google Glass, there was nothing established. They came up with the hardware long before there was any software that would really take advantage of that, even their own software. Google's a bad example too because Google uh, is shit at hardware. Uh, they, they don't support their own hardware, especially with their own software. Uh, you know, the Pixel line even now with their new flagship thing is having the same issues. Stadia is already, you know, I mean, they're they're getting rid of their own development team for that. I mean, I could go on and on. So Google's, I think Google Glass was ahead of its time, but also Google is a bad company to look to, to be the future of that. There's been rumors though for years and years and years, and I think we're getting closer to, uh, to Apple having AR uh, glasses. We've been waiting for this for the last few years. Every new Mac year or every new, sorry, year in the Apple calendar of events, everyone's going, are the AR glasses coming? And there's rumor after rumor, um, you know, because Apple's really focused on AR, especially with me, look at the new iPhones, uh, the Pro ones, uh, they have like LiDAR sensors, including the iPads, where you can actually like build AR spaces with the devices themselves. So there's definitely a focus on that with technology. But I agree with you what you're saying with Pokemon Go. I mean, everyone, everything everyone said is is completely right. Uh, I, don't, I think it's hard. Pokemon was such a perfect IP for this. We've said it a million times before. Um, you know, the whole point is walking around and catching things in a nondescript area, which is exactly what Niantic's technology is tailor-made for. Ingress, the thing they built the technology on, wasn't even as good as this. This is perfect. But I think you're, I think to do this different is to, like, create an entire other world uh in ar not just yeah. a pokemon happens to pop up for you because of where you're looking in your room but rather that pokemon actually exists in that physical space in a very specific location where it can tell where things are not just pokemon right but i mean places uh, uh, you know it's like a harry potter you know nine and three quarters thing you open up your phone you look through a different uh you know piece of technology and all of a sudden that wall is no longer a normal wall but a wall into a different world and, and your room is a different world and we've seen that technology through hololens with microsoft we've seen a lot you know i'm not saying hololens is like a perfect product but we've seen the attempts there and we've seen that being pushed along uh, i don't think it needs to be a phone i don't sorry i don't think it needs to be glasses i think you can still do it with a phone and have that be successful but I think the thing is, it's going to cost a lot of money and development and resources and R&D to be able to create this kind of next-gen software. Uh, and I feel, feel like unless there's going to be glasses hardware that really makes it so you can't ignore this other world that exists, uh, you know, companies won't put the money in. So, uh, yeah, ultimately, I think that I think we need to, like, revolutionize the product. Another Niantic you know, clone with a different IP skin over it isn't going to do it. Um, and I think even like stuff like we talked about on GG Replay this week, Pikmin Bloom, where they're doing something a little bit different with it. It's not necessarily you're having your phone out all the time. You're walking and then you check your phone sometimes and your Pikmin have grown. And it's something a little more passive. Ultimately, though, as popular as that might be with like a niche crowd, I think to have the next Pokemon Go requires that massive software. And while I don't think it requires the glasses hardware, I think that's going to come along with it. Before we get to Josh, I want to say one thing, sort of that Mike said. As soon as I started playing Pokemon Go when it first came out, I turned off the AR because I, yeah. I just wanted the 
the uh the, the pokemon to just exist on the screen but not necessarily in in augmented space i think the coolest thing about ar so far for me is existing on the map in in your app is is being yeah. in a in a space on the map but not actually using your phone to look and see other things existing in the world it's not there yet i don't think i think it and i think pokemon's bad for that too just to interrupt really quick the pokemon game they don't really like bl it's pretty blanket what they're doing with that right. so i mean it just kind of guesses based on your space and then tosses them in because it's not going to like sit there and go hey can you measure your space and see where you are right. when you actually use stuff that's like meant for ar you can do like with ikea and some other apps i think where you can like put a chair in your room and see how it would look that's true if you if you take like a minute or so just to like you know zoom and and, and size everything and move it around properly and the AR is really amazing. Um, but yeah, with Pokemon, it's supposed to just like, no matter where the fuck you're pointing, it'll pop a Pokemon up somewhere and try to guess the size of it. So in that scenario, yeah, I, I agree. That AR just is too too vague for it to work properly. Josh, what are your thoughts on this whole thing? Did you play Pokemon Go? I, I did quite a bit when it, when it launched in summer of 2016. I had not a care in the world. I was going to college. I didn't have a job. <laughs> I was just in my sh overpriced student apartment smoking veggies every day and doing nothing so it was just like this is a perfect excuse to do exactly that except go outside and walk around and catch pokemon and ar i'm gonna literally just voice everyone else's same opinion here so to not repeat the same point i'll just say yeah i agree it's lightning in a bottle i don't think it'll happen again instead i'll just uh play up the nostalgia a little bit and just talk about how fucking cool it was for a little bit uh i mean it really was just like just neat as hell like everyone was everyone was doing it like at the time like I was on a college campus at the time and not, not even necessarily like what someone would consider like a commuter school. And even then it was covered up with people. Like people were just shouting out when there was a certain Pokemon, there's a Pokemon <laughs> here, there's a Pokemon there. Literally everyone and their mother was rushing to these motherfuckers just while they're just sitting here. I used the augmented reality for a little while on it. And honestly it was complete dog water. You'd lose more Pokemon than it was worth having on. So I would just turn it off and, you know, be done with it. It was just such a cool experience. Like it was a unique gaming experience that actually got me out of the house, and it was it was, it was nice to actually see that uh, for once. And, and I, I hope something can maybe figure out how to do it, be that kind of revolution. It's just no other game. I mean, okay, other games do, but no other game in what this exactly is has that kind of staying power that Pokemon does. I don't even like Pokemon, and to me, Pokemon is super impressive. So, you know, who knows? Um, I, I think there's good potential here um, for maybe something. But I, at the end of the day, I honestly don't think it's going to happen. And, and I think we're going to get to a point where people try to recreate the magic and then trip over themselves, fall and move on. Maybe when we get to a state where, you know, AR is a little more acceptable for people and it's easier, ex easier to access, you know, people have experienced it more. I think we're going to be in a better spot with this thing. Um, but, you know. We'll have to see, I, but as as it stands, uh, yeah, light, lightning in a bottle. We're we're never gonna see that again. It's um, funny that you said everyone and their mother was playing because I literally know mothers who were playing Pokemon Go at the time. Yeah, <laughs> like everyone was playing. People who had never had anything to do with Pokemon before have never had anything to do with Pokemon since. We're playing. It was just one of it's those hard things. To, it's hard to have nothing to do with Pokemon too. That's the thing. It was such a right. it's such a massive IP that even yeah. like their, your your nephew plays it or your kid plays it or like watch the show. And unlike like Minecraft and video game stuff, it's not just games. It's also like right. shows and movies. And so you had to have like you have to know Pikachu. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that that's yeah. all you need is the gateway drug. It's always crazy to me things like that where everyone knows it, like Mario or Pikachu. Like everyone yeah. knows what that is just because at some point in their life they came across that. All right. Well, uh, I think I think we can wrap that up. We all pretty much <laughs> agree on Pokemon Go specifically and AR and that it it could stand to be a little bit more interesting, but that what Pokemon did was certainly, but what Pokemon Go did was certainly unique at the time and, and magical and was in the right place at the right time. You know what? I, I do have one follow-up because uh, I was thinking about it for five seconds. Um, <laughs> you know what I would like to see in AR? Going back to what Paul's been talking about, about you know measuring your room, making a space for it, making it actual AR. Um, Tamagotchi. Or have your own Pokemon. Or Pokemon. <laughs> or Digimon. If, Let's get a Digimon. Yeah. But, 
<laughs> yeah, no. well, Digimon um, works better for that because you have one Digimon that you like yeah. love. So that's like a big Digimon factor. Anyway, sorry, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, but anyways, uh, I feel like Tamagotchi bringing that back would be intelligent. I think it would hit on the nostalgia and you don't need a large area, just like a table that you can put your Tamagotchi on and play with it and whatever. But I think it'd be an interesting uh, IP to use. Just uh, just so we're clear, Digimon started as uh, a Tamagotchi clone, basically. So, all right, let's move on. <laughs> I do think... Uh, right, we don't like clones around here, right? But see, Digimon have existed in like 2D, 3D space before. Like, Tamagotchis like are like Digimon. little... Right. No time like the present. <laughs> we, need, we should have... I will... You'll like Digimon by the end of uh, the year. That's my goal. Uh, if I like Digimon by the end of the year, you'll like Sonic by the end of the year. Okay. Hey. That's, well, let's, no, let's move on. All right. In this next segment, we're going to spay and neuter our Pokemon because we're playing The Score is Right. Do, uh, do they, how do they calculate? I imagine male, female, right? I always just, well, they, yeah, I assume. Because you breed that. them in the game, right? Yeah. Yes, you yeah. do. Uh, are there but some don't have genders and some only have one gender right Bro. How, uh, what a, well that's a conversation a... for another day all right <laughs> in the score is right i give our panelists a video game title and they have to give me their best estimate for its metacritic score based on the best scoring platform upon initial release in this mini game we use price is right rules meaning the one who is closest to the correct score without going over will win We'll play nine rounds, rotating the order in which our three panelists make their guesses for each round. Panelists with the most close guesses at the end wins. We take game title suggestions for the scores, right, from our $1 plus supporters over on Patreon at patreon.com slash goodnightgroups, where you can message us Ooh. your suggestion. Oh, the value. Ooh. <laughs> value. Mm. And we'll, we'll rotate, so we'll go Mike, Josh, Paul, Josh, Paul, Mike, then Paul, Mike, Josh, all right? Do I need to go through it again? Oh, okay. No, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'll write it down. First game, <laughs> Bug Snacks. Jesus fucking Christ. Why did you go first on <laughs> Bug Snacks? <laughs> Thank God. I don't know, 76. I literally have no fucking clue. 69. Nice. I'm going to nice. say 70. You bitch. <laughs> 79. Mike wins. Hey. I thought I mean, it'd be in the, but that's high. Jeez. People you liked know, Bug good. Snacks. It was it, yeah. it bug snacks. It, ironically. It's good yeah. and it benefited from being a launch title for the next gen consoles. Good? Yeah, you know, as as an avid Bug Snacks fan, I have to agree. Yeah. Love me some Bug Snacks. Round two. <laughs> Where the neck. Uh, that's not a high high bar. <laughs> Round two. Goat Simulator. We're gonna go with 82. I'm going to go with, uh, fuck, I don't know, 69. Nice. 70. No one gets it. 62. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was feeling it would be I, low, but I just, I was worried. I thought it was like meme enough that it, people were just going to be like, fuck. Oh, it, it's not a good game. <laughs> yeah. It, it's terrible. It, it was one of those first like meme simulator games, but yeah. At, yeah. at the time that wasn't like a, thing people were very confused by goat simulator i think yeah all right i bought it on numerous different platforms <laughs> <laughs> it's on mobile isn't it it sure is what the i fuck? bought it on mobile <laughs> all right round three kingdom hearts 358 over two days why <laughs> why i picked this one just for mike remind remaster what? Uh, fuck. I don't know. Let's say, I mean, I'm the first one. Who, who, how the fuck am I going to get this? I'm going to go ahead and say something a little too high that no one will, will jump over me. 74. Which one is this? I think, <laughs> Can I ask that? I think this is the 3DS one. I think. Weren't there more than one of those? Uh, fuck. I think there were two, but yeah. uh, whatever. Okay, 358 over two days. No, I think this is the DS one. Yeah, but again, I think there were multiple Honestly, DS I ones. have no fucking clue anymore. Yeah. 70. 70. 
Kingdom Hearts is bad. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's, so we're working backwards from that. <laughs> Fuck it. It's magic number, baby. Uh, I don't know. I fucking... I, I genuinely have no idea. I, 80. Fuck it. It's Kingdom Hearts. Let it live on in the name. All right. Kingdom Hearts 2 is a genuinely good game. The score is 75. Uh, Paul wins. I love to see it. All right, round four, Deep Rock Galactic. Hey. I wish I had any. I need to just not play games that are Mass Effect, Fallout, <laughs> Skyrim, and MMOs. You would love this everyone... game. Josh, I don't play any of these yeah, games. I just like game. read nonsense about Just go on Reddit way more often. I just play know. these games. Why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just read about everything and then pretend I've played them. Oh, fucking yeah, I have no clue. I just... Set. 77 fuck it why are you guessing it's my turn to guess oh, I, thought, I thought it was my turn oh whoops i'm a moron <laughs> well it benefits mike to go second so yeah no let's let mike go first still josh you can you can sit on it <laughs> uh it's not a bad game uh, 82 Is it an underground gem fuck it i'll i don't know that i'll, I'll stick with my answer 77 he hasn't even gone no, I said 82. Oh, you did? I didn't hear you say 82. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just sound like a psychopath just saying it again. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, fuck. I'm going to... I feel like if I say 78, that'll give me the right answer. But what I'm going to say is $1, Bob. 85. People like this game. It's a good game. I just... Yeah. Under the radar. No context. Yeah. <laughs> <Pretty> <laughs> All right, next round. <laughs> It's a co-op shooter. Uh, you have a mission. You have to go down and retrieve something from a cavern in order it's to do that. Mine, you have to mine, dig not Minecraft. Josh would like this yes. game. Yes, Josh, mine you would shoot. like this game. Okay, All interesting. Right. Next game. Josh, just get four hundred more games. You'll know what they are. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Good job. Next game is Brain Age Two. More trending in minutes a day. Hey, 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 hey Matt. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, there's at least one more on this list for you. Don't worry. <laughs> Fuck this dumb shit. I love five dollars. I don't know. I'm the first guess. I'm going five dollars. Or your score is five. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I. I'll just go six. Uh, you yeah, don't do it, I you mean, bitch. Might as well, but then you're gonna fuck me up. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna say seventy-eight. That's a really good score. 79. Josh wins. It was 77. Yeah, Josh, yeah, Josh wins. Oh! Uh, my God. <laughs> Let's fucking go! By one point. All Man, right. if I said 77, I would have got a, an action. What is it? A true daily double? No, those are different games. Next game. The Forest. Good game. Yep. Well, fun game. Is it Not a good when it game? came out. Yeah. Mm, who is it? It's Paul. Paul. Oh, it's, it's me. Paul. It's me. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, 72. <laughs> nice, nice eyebrows. Thank you. For those on the audio podcast, well, Matt is uh, wiggling his eyebrows. And just a reminder to those out there while uh, Mike is thinking, uh, this is also a video podcast. So if you're listening to this right now, feel free to go over YouTube and you can see uh, Matt's eyebrows and my creepy mustache, which looks kind of like a big eyebrow. Yeah, I've got my cock out right now. Come see. Okay. Uh, well. <laughs> TOS. <laughs> it's, a pet, it's a pet rooster, okay? <laughs> Easy. Oh my God. Uh, shoot. Sixty-seven. <laughs> just, just because you thought about it so long. Sixty-eight. Wow. <laughs> Eighty-three. Oh, well, we got, we both got fucked anyways, Mike. You know what it is worth it. Next game. Oh. I, I think <laughs> at least someone on this panel is going to recognize this title. I think. What's the score so far? Mike will then. Mike definitely will. I have two. Paul has two. Josh has one. Mm. Super Lucky's Tale. Hey, good game. No. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's on game. You guys. You guys. What is it? What is it, it's, Paul? It's a 3D platformer. Yeah, it's a it's an okay well, I'm giving don't, stuff don't away. Say that. It's a You're 3D platform. Away. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Uh, Mine I don't too. Know what this is. New I've Super Lucky's Tale now. Probably... Now New Super Lucky's oh. Tale is a different game. Yeah. It's, better. it's important to remember as well, yeah. Probably not good. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> wow. 65. Uh, we keeping an A1 in this bitch. 69. 70. A big ol' fuck you to Mike. It's a 64. 
<laughs> Nobody gets it. <laughs> so I wasn't wrong, Matt. <laughs> It's not really a fuck you to Mike. It just proved him right. Well, he didn't get it right by one yeah, point. Right. So that's the uh, big ol' that's the big F you. That's that fuck you number, man. That's that fuck you score. All right. <laughs> two more. We got two more. The next one is Saints Row 4. Oh, my God. A game I'm familiar with. Uh, is, is, uh, the meteor about to fucking crush us? Uh, well, I hope actually, so. I like Saint Row sort of Four, but that's just because it was really fucking dumb. Anyways, yeah, uh, dumbest one. That was great. Uh, <laughs> shocking coming one, from me. Uh, is that the one in a video game. Yeah, you're the president, and also yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, game, I know exactly. Like, it was and, like it was like Ghost Simulator, but GTA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get superpowers. Yep. Yeah. Uh, anyway, seventy five. Uh, well, fuck. I'm gonna say eighty two. Seventy six. 86. Why? For I, what? I knew I should have gone higher. It's just because it's for fucking, what? It's because it's Black got Divinity. the name. And it, I, I, yeah. I loved it. I thought it was great. All right. Last game. What's the score here, Mike? 3, Three two, 2, 1. All me, Josh. All right. All right. Final game is Portal. The first one? Portal. <laughs> Fuck me in my shrimp dick. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, All right. Do shrimps? Uh, right? What'd you say? Never, don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm going first. I'm going to fucking lose. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and say 92. It's a really good guess. Uh, I'll say 90. Uh, uh, well, first off, big F's in the chat for one dollar uh, would be a smart move. I won't lie to you, Josh. Like, you could really, if it did underperformed even a little bit, but look, uh, to quote John F. Kennedy, I might be stupid. 96. Da -da 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 Someone got it exactly right. 90. It was Mike. Hey, hey, there nice. it is. Tie yeah, game. See wow. wow. Do we have a tiebreaker, Matt, available? Uh, we can in a we second here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just uh, do a little well, talking. Uh, while we're doing that, uh, thank you to uh, Arm and Hammer. Not Army Hammer. Uh, Arm and Hammer. We don't eat our clients. <laughs> Actually, actually, would uh, if we could get an Arm and Hammer sponsorship, that'd be great. They really do keep my balls. Uh, or an Army Hammer. Great. No, honestly, Arm, have you not heard the thing about Army Hammer being a cannibal psycho? What? what? Yeah, he like was like he was like sexually assaulting women and like saying he was going to eat them. And he All right, we to, have like, a game. Someone. We have a game. <laughs> thing. No, so no Army no. Hammer sponsorship, guys. <laughs> no, Arm no, and no. Hammer. That nothing really joke. said. That was, nothing. That was the joke. Honestly, nothing uh. says fun-loving gaming <laughs> podcast like uh, murdering cannibals. Uh, this is good. It's excellent. All right, there, everyone. Murders Add on Overcast. Thanks for listening. We have a we have a tiebreaker game right here. Yep. This is a Switch title from 2017. Cars Three driven to win. <laughs> <laughs> okay should we how do we determine who's going to go first because that matters a lot in this game all right uh, who had who had the lead going into it me paul oh. and are we giving josh a guess give me yeah, one. sure what the all right. fuck it we're up. going yeah. josh mike paul i'm gonna win <laughs> yeah josh uh 45 you have a very difficult position here, Mike. I don't, don't envy it. This sucks. You gotta guess something that I won't 56. overtake. Oh, but like, fuck though. Like, it could nope. be worse than. Come on, come on, go, go one dollar, Paul. Go one dollar. It could be worse than. Well, it's not worse than. That. Go one dollar. It's gotta be. It's I mean, cars three. It. I mean, I'm going fifty-seven, of course. Fifty-nine. Paul wins. Wow, that, was, that was razor thin. That was how, close. How the fuck did fucking 100% Owen Wilson did not voice that guy? Like, uh, scuffed, scuffed Owen Wilson Cars played Lightning Kachow. Probably God. one of the better racing games on the Switch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, come soon. The Forza Horizon uh, port where your car will just be one big red block. 
Good. <laughs> Let's move on to the water cooler. Let's take a quick break around the water cooler to discuss the games that we have been playing this week. I'll go first because I just played like 45 minutes of Pumpkin Jack. I had almost no time to play games this week because Halloween work. I just watched some scary movies instead of playing games because I wanted to get something out of Halloween this year. And uh, so I still haven't finished Pumpkin, Pumpkin Jack, but hopefully I'll finish before next week. Never got to Medieval before Halloween. So now I'm either going to be playing in November after Halloween or I'm going to wait another year <laughs> we'll see how this goes because i always push i always push my halloween games further into october than i intend to i'm always like eh, it's too early to start and then it's like october 17th and i'm like eh, i still have a little bit of time i'm kind of busy today i'll play i'll play tomorrow and then it's like october 25th and i'm trying to play like six games by the end of the month that's what we do with movies this year and we we watched like two halloween movies we just totally fucked up yeah it's i i'm I hate that I do that. I don't know why. It happens every fucking year. I never learn. I'm an idiot. All right, Paul, what did you play this week? <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, not a lot of stuff. I'm going to use this moment to just recap really quickly that uh, this moment in the sun that I did have a good Halloween. Um, I didn't say peak of the week, but it probably was my peak of the week. Not only did, were we the house on the street, it wasn't even that good, but like just no one else really did a lot. So we had a few different little features with lights. That was pretty cool. Um, but also uh, a couple kids thought I looked like Ninja uh, and <laughs> I was wearing a Fortnite sweater and I had my little blonde top on my head. And uh, the kids were like, are you ninja? And I didn't understand what the fuck they were. I was like, I'm not dressed like a ninja. And then <laughs> they started walking away. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I could be ninja. And then they didn't think that was very funny. Uh, and then as, I wa <laughs> as they walked away, they started like saying other streamers I look like. And then also like making fun of me. Uh, so that was that. Uh, but Paul, yeah, what Paul tell me again. Who's the guy that people have said you look I like? I think, oh, the, the guy that everyone I think I look like and a lot of people say I look like is um, is Nade Shot. Yes. That's something. Not uh, with the, the mustache, who, though. The dude who runs 100 Thieves. When you, when you do the beard. YouTuber. Yeah, when I do the beard and the blonde hair and just my general look. Um, I said recently, if anyone looks up pictures of Nade Shot, I think he looks like Matt and I's baby. He looks like the baby, the, the child of Matt and I. I can see it. Kind of a cross between us. So there you go. That's that. He was a pro Call of Duty player and now he owns a team. Soon I will be the same once Grooves takes off, boys. Um, uh, what did I actually play this week? Uh, <laughs> I just played a little bit more of Humankind. Uh, I tried to play and get into it again. Eh, I know, Mike. I, I wanted to like it. I tried playing it last week. I tried playing it again this week. Um, it's just like there's maybe a few too many systems for me. Uh, to totally get into it. I do like the UI and like the the graphics still, but um, yeah, the system's not my favorite. I did play Civ after actually though, uh, cause I just was like, fuck, I just, this makes me want to play Civilization. Played some Civ Five, that was really fun. So uh, yeah, that was that was it. Paul's reviewing Humankind for us. Uh, quote on the, put it on the back of the box. I like the UI. I do. The U <laughs> I'm playing Civ Five all the time, and the UI in Humankind is like so it like moves and morphs, and it's very clean, and it it's it's just it's got like little notifications in the bottom. It's a really cool modern UI, and I like it a lot more than playing. I haven't played Civ Six that much, but like Civ Five UI, but I just it's a little more complex uh, in gameplay than uh, I just I haven't like found the groove of like a win condition that I really enjoy yet. So that's that's that for me. Josh, what'd you play this week, sir? Well, uh, I actually played a lot of games this week, um, but but as as per the usual, when I say a lot of games, boy, golly gee, when will I World ever expand my left. when will I ever expand my library? Uh, as soon as I'm fucking dead. Uh, so of course I did. Uh, well, I, let me just preface it by saying this: New World has fallen on hard times, and by fallen on hard times, <laughs> it is the Great Depression times two. Um, it is literally a dumpster fire. Any, anything that uh, it is, it is an abortion of, a, of, of an MMO at this point. Like it is. <laughs> Josh, I, I said this week on replay that I tried to return it on Steam, even though I'm past my 14 days and I played three hours. I sent them an email and just I, I, like I sent the thing and I just said like this game sucks. Like it's it, like it's just like I don't want to get my identity stolen. Can I get my money back? And they were like, sorry, it's past the 14 days. I was like, okay, cool. I guess I'm gonna play a lot more New World then. <laughs> so. All that said, I it's kind of lost. It's like the crafting and gathering has kind of lost its luster for me. I'm hitting a wall on everything I'm doing. The questing is the exact same everywhere. So all that said, 
I went back to an MMO that's currently having no problems at all, no current <laughs> no current issues with their current parent company, nothing at all. Uh, World of Warcraft, um, <laughs> mainly just because nine point one point five came out. Um, Were and you I searching nine point one point five? Were you one of those numbers? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was playing a lot of nine point one point five level and some new characters. I liked a lot of the new changes they added. Um, oh, while do I think it's going to really hold people like for an extended period of time? No, but it's nice quality of life changes that uh, you know should have happened because all this feedback came in the beta. I'm getting into getting a little niche here, but um, other than that, uh, something else I've been playing a lot of is Mass Effect. Uh, I got into the Legendary Edition again. Thank fucking God I did because I forgot how damn good that game is. Beat Mass Effect 1 all the way through, uh, good old uh, male ship, man ship, whatever the fuck you want to call them. And uh, now I'm in Mass Effect 2. And holy shit, how much better Mass Effect 2 is than Mass Effect 1. Wow, you could basically use a sniper rifle in Mass Effect 1 as a goddamn machine gun. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's actually dumb as hell how much you can just like run through the hardest levels in that game and not even try. But yeah, Mass Effect has been a blast. I uh, And then this one's going to be a little bit of a surprise. Uh, because I've been searching for MMOs, I may or may not have resubbed to Final Fantasy, and I'm trying to get back into Heaven's Ward. Um, I thought you were going to okay. say Rift. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, sorry. No, you <laughs> to look for a good MMO to play. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I looked up Wildstar, but it was weird. I couldn't find anything. But, uh, but yeah, it was, a, it was a productive week of gaming, actually. Well, productive for, you know, my uh, plays the same game looking ass. So, yeah, good, 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 good week. Good week. <laughs> awesome. Mike. What did you play this week? I know you, you came back from Vegas. You're like, I need to decompress with a bunch of Steam games. I'm going to go through 20 games in my Steam library. So let's hear it. What did you play this, this week? Super Lucky's Tale. I, I came back and didn't play games. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's not entirely true. Um, but it's mostly for, true. For, like, Ma for Mike, it. playing not a lot of games is like 10 games. Mike just plays I played... Texas Hold'em on his phone now. No, I went to the Texas Hold'em tables and those are bullshit. Um, no, like actually, like real quick Vegas story. Uh, they have a poker room at the hotel where you can go and play poker and it's like low buy-in. It's $100 for like one in $3 blinds, but all the tables are no limits. So people just go there at the start of the day and just sit there all day and hoard chips and then bully people out of the table. Um, it's actual bullshit. <laughs> Like, I got to a table, and this person clearly had, like, over, like, five grand. And wow. I'm like, I'm going to buy in for a hundred. Dudes be grinding. <laughs> here's, a, here's, a little, here's a little tip. If everyone's hoarding chips when you want to sit there at the table all day, go to the grocery store, guys. Bag of Lay's, two bucks. Oh, my God. God damn it. Damn, that's smart there. Just throw them out on the table, and you get kicked out. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. You can put food I have, on the I've been kicked out of every casino I've ever gone to for that exact reason. Um, anyways. Anyways, anyways. Uh, so I did come back. Um, didn't play anything on Monday or Sunday. But I did play Humankind yesterday. Mm. And I was going to get into it. And Paul kind of beat me to the punch. Um, it's okay. It's not good. <laughs> I remember um, you being really hyped when you first played it, and me too. I really liked it. I really like, yeah. I really like the bones that they have for it. I don't think it's complex Same. enough. I think it's very limiting in some regards. Um, it feels like once you get out in front, you're once you get out in front past like the third era, you're basically going to win the game. Yeah, it's just it's missing something um, that Civ Six has. And it doesn't. I think it's just complexity because the only way to win in humankind is to be the most famous, which means essentially whoever gets the most points in the game. Um, whereas Civ has like wing conditions such as, yeah. you know, religion, get everyone to follow your religion, co uh, conquest, conquer everyone, science, launch the rover to Mars, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, humankind doesn't have that. All those are, are ways to end the game, but not necessarily win the game, which the game kind of ends after I've been playing on normal. So it ends after 300 turns, which yeah, same, yeah. none of us are really ever close to finishing any of the optional objectives anyway. So yeah, I don't really know why I, those are in there. Right. The game ended at 300 turns in my <laughs> first game. And I was like, what? Like I have even, yeah. I'm not even close. I'm not even in like in the most no. modern era. Like what the hell? Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah. Thinking about turning off the term limit, but I don't yeah. know. 
it lacks a complexity in how to win the game, I think, and that might be because of the turn limit. I want to try a game without it. I played it on stream. I'm going to probably play it again on stream at some point. But um, it just lacks... It lacks different strategies, it feels like. It feels like you're supposed to... It feels feels like like you just do whatever, and then as long as you do whatever the right way and enough times, you win. (laughs) Like, it's kind of boring. So... That's kind of weird so coming game, from the Endless Space team. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I played all of the Endless series. This is a dumbed down version of an Endless game. Um, well, maybe I could play it. I'm, ki- <laughs> I'm kind <laughs> of annoyed could. by some of the things in the game. Uh, when I play Endless games, I tend to take my people and move them around. I do the same thing in Civ, but I tend to really do it in Endless games because I feel like I can optimize a little bit better than just following a blanket approach. But one of the things in Endless Space that you could do is you could send your citizens to different cities or planets and have them live there. And in Humankind... I think there's one Civ that can do that and no one else, wow. or it's a type of Civ that can do it and no one else. But like, I end up where I have like three cities that are sitting there and it'll be one turn, it gained a population, next turn it loses a population. It'll just sit there and flux forever. Yep. Um, whereas I have other cities that are like, we have the food, but not the people. And I'm like, can I take my people here and just shove them over there so that they actually do something? You can. And some um, civilizations, there's a civilization type that lets you do that too. Yes. Move people to different. But areas. like, not all of them do. And like, it has a lot of good ideas. I just think it falls flat on it being too simplistic. I think there needs to be a little bit more. I'm annoyed by their research tree. Because the research tree goes through what I think like Civ Five had the same issue. Once you reach like the modern era, everything becomes unit and military based. It's like, oh, research this, you get a new unit and nothing else. Uh, humankind, the later stages are the same way. I'm gonna keep playing it uh, just because I got really, really burnt out of Civ Six. But I will say, Civ Six, especially right now with the weather and everything else um with the weather update the disaster update and just all the expansions um is in a much much better place i think for a 4x game um and if you want an endless type of 4x game i'd play endless space 2 over humankind i don't know humankind is just like this weird feels almost unfinished yeah i'd say that's kind of funny, though, because Civ games feel like that on launch, too, usually. Like, it, yeah. you need the DLC, you need the updates before Civ actually yep. feels yeah. like it's supposed to. It's such a good yep. Civ clone that they've even cloned the entire style of how it releases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, who knows? I, I assume they're going to continue to update it. I assume they're going to add new things that will make it more interesting and more fun and will eventually get to a finished product. Um, but, yeah, I agree with what you're saying, Matt. Civ 6 felt unfinished. Adding in the espionage stuff made it feel better. I think adding in the global warming stuff made it feel great. I think adding in the disaster stuff made it feel a little bit like Mario Party, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I could talk about 4X games for a very long time, um, but I won't. I'll end it there. <laughs> All right. Well, it was a light week for us. Josh was our biggest gamer this week with his usual suspects. I, I, I like how if we ever get, you know, to the point where we have a big following, people are just going to yep. like, we just need to go ahead and carve out my little section specifically in water cooler <laughs> so people can just skip past it because they're just like, okay, it's going to be XMMO and it's going to be some fucking game that he's already played before. Timestamps just for Josh this segment. <laughs> I'm Stamps. If you want to hear about uh, how Heaven's Word's going. Perfect. We need a we need a score is right that focuses exclusively on games Josh has played. <laughs> my entire library. Yeah. <laughs> what are these days? Like, I just well, need to you know what? Wow's not that good, but like to me, it's a hundred. So I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> One of these days, I'm just going to exclusively play different games during the week. I probably won't. Uh, and and just surprise uh, everybody. Josh, I need to put a won't. list of games together that you would like, just so you can give them a shot. 
See, he, I uh, feel like he knows. He just won't I've play done it. that. Yeah, uh, I've done uh, that. Yeah. It doesn't work. <laughs> I, I am I am a comfort gamer, whereas yeah. I, I will be a gluttonous bitch on Fallout Four for the eighth time. All right. Yep. Well, <laughs> note how much he loves Back for Blood, but I didn't hear that on the list. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's true josh falls in love with the game and then just stops playing it that's it yeah me too Same All right. this isn't the roast of josh so we'll, we'll move on. let's move on to audience oh, questions be. every week we address two or three audience questions comments or concerns and we take questions from our supporters over on patreon at patreon.com slash goodnight groups where you can leave your questions in the comments section of the previous episode's post the one dollar tier just one dollar will give you access to question submissions However, we also take question submissions at gamegroups at gmail.com and in the YouTube comments, but our patrons will always receive priority. Today, our questions, both of them, come from the YouTube comments section. So go ahead and use that. Let's All go. Right. <laughs> use it for what? What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, first question comes from Derek. Both questions actually come from Derek. Derek versus the world on YouTube. Thank you, Derek. All right, first question. What is your favorite game that everyone else considers bad? Mine is Final Fantasy VIII. All right, so Derek loves Final Fantasy VIII. A lot of other people consider it among the lower tier as far as Final Fantasy games go, or at least underrated as far as Final Fantasy games go. I'll go first. Now, if I'm answering truthfully, it's probably Rift because a lot of people don't like Rift. I really do like Rift. I think it's a good MMO. Just There's just no one playing it. Now, if I'm not picking an MMO... <laughs> there's a reason. <laughs> if I'm not picking an MMO, it's probably Beyond Two Souls. I think Beyond Two Souls is a really good game. I think it's way better than Heavy Rain. And Heavy Rain gets a ton of praise. And I think Beyond Two Souls is like leaps and bounds better than heavy rain i really like that game i think it does unique things with the story i think it does unique things with gameplay i actually really like beyond two souls uh and then honorable mentions i'll give two quick ones to conan exiles and sea of thieves just because the public opinion on them originally was really low but over the last couple of years it's gotten a lot more positive paul what about you what what's your favorite game that everyone else considers bad well, uh, I was going to say Sea of Thieves, honorable mention to Conan Exiles. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we play a lot of the same games there, buddy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, just a, a shout out to, yeah, I, I, uh, I couldn't get into Beyond Two Souls. So maybe that's me. I, I like to, I will say I like Detroit, although I think that's pretty popular. But uh, I, I know a lot of people shit on David Cage. And I even like the shitty David Cage writing in it. Um, I'm only saying shitty to be to be cool and mainstream, but I actually love everything about Detroit Become Human. Um, but yeah, Sea of Thieves is my shit. Uh, I thought I know it's getting better like reception now, but I did recently double check uh, earlier before I made this uh, answer just to to see uh, what the actual score is. The score is 67. Yeah, yeah. It, it was on a recent episode. Fucking 67. As we just I know as on a recent episode, and I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, closer to closer to 100 on that one. So uh, beautiful game, beautiful game, Mike. Don't even don't make a face. Uh, and uh, Conan Exile is also a great game. The it's buggy mess, but it's also like the framework for what I feel like could be like my favorite type of game if they just got like a little bit closer. Uh, so yeah, good yeah, stuff. I legitimately think that Conan Exiles is like a really really good game. Like if they just put like a different developer that's not Funcom like come in now and fix it and clean it up and like maybe change like maybe fuck with the IP a little bit because Conan you know whatever it's you know it's kind of like stagnated a little bit here um that would be sick because there's there's some big bugs in it but ultimately it's my favorite MMO light and it actually made me think like realize how amazing that genre is in general and some actual big bugs that you can fight oh yeah Mike yeah uh. I don't know that I really have an answer. I'm not saying that like, oh, I only like good games, but like, I just, I can't think of a game that I've liked that has been bad. Um, Maybe something know. that was Maybe... like not received well in well, release. That's like kind of the best. I was going to say, Sudo gonna you say love like, Sudoku. That's a terrible I was going to say Sudoku. Shit game. <laughs> like, Shit game. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, based on the panel here, Sudoku would be my number one answer. <laughs> hey, um, I'm not shitting on Sudoku, man. I think it's a good game. It's just not for me. But. <laughs> Come back to me. 
I was okay. going to say, Mike, is a suggestion for something you might want to use as an answer? I saw people, I was looking up underrated gems in games people think got a hard time, and Guild Wars 2 was often a, a, a common answer I actually saw. People saying that that game gets a lot of shit, but it actually is like a pretty fun game. I mean, it does get a lot of shit, but I don't know that it's reviewed poorly. Yeah, fair enough. Josh, yeah. let's go to you and we'll come back to Mike. Okay, so uh, again, if it's a favorite game, that means it comes from my limited game library. I'm having like a shock realization at this point that I have to play more games. So welcome <laughs> to the... Uh, or just read Reddit. <laughs> That's what I do. What, what is it? I don't know. The cleansing of Josh? I don't fucking know. Um, so anyways... No one wants that. Uh, <laughs> um, it, Fallout 4. Uh, I mean, look. Fallout 4 is clearly still a popular like game. It's not like if you look at the reviews, it's like in the fucking gutter. But based on Fallout games, it's certainly not the most popular. You know, I'd say it's probably the least popular out of all the, you know, new mainstream games. Three, New Vegas. Uh, well, we just, you know, leave 76 there. I don't like it either. Um, but uh, I was just know, 76 would be a great answer. Yeah, 76 would be. Unfortunately, I fucking hate that game. Yeah. Uh, and I tried for almost 100 hours. Boy, golly gee, Holy a waste cow. of time, baby. Uh, I'd love to see it, just like I wasted 70 hours in Mass Effect Andromeda. Fuck you, Space Sudoku. Um, Weirdly, my favorite Mass Effect game that i played so far is Andromeda. And my favorite, uh, not my favorite Fallout, but I had a good time in 76. Well, your I, favorite like bad, Ma- I like bad shit. <laughs> your favorite Mass Effect game was Andromeda? I just, I, the other ones felt too dated to me, but maybe I should just suck it up and play them. I didn't play them when they came out. Play, play the legendary edition if that's what yeah, you if that yeah. it's it, it really does help a lot also right. andromeda is actual liquid ass um, i like the idea it's a space <laughs> optimism right i like the idea that we're going to the <laughs> galaxy and we're we're, we're going episode. where no one's gone god i just uh, look i could rant for days about it mass effect andromeda but i i won't i'll 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 go back into my oh, diatribe no. about fallout 4 you don't like peepers uh peepers <laughs> literally has the face rigging of a traffic cone like it is the worst thing I've ever seen. Like everyone that here we go. Everyone that talks in that fucking game, like their emotions don't match what they're feeling. Like literally, someone could be shot in front of them, and they'll just be like, "Ha ha ha ha! That's great!" Like what? Yeah. If I was having a really bad day, that's how I would react to being shot. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, so I'll be real quick about Fallout Four. Obviously, settlement building did not really go over super well with a lot of people. I fucking loved it. I thought it was great. The voice protagonist. Okay. I'm kind of with you there. We could do without that in the next one. Uh, but overall, the exploring was good for a Fallout game. The, the, the aesthetic was great. The shooting mechanics were fantastic. Vats was improved upon. And uh, the story, while it wasn't just the most incredible thing in the world, it was better than Fallout 3. And uh, it was a good time. I enjoyed it. All right. Mike, we're coming back to you. I hope you got an answer for us. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm like taking <laughs> my, like the games the end of that... the show. I'm taking the games that I have played like the most and just like looking up open critic scores. It's like, nah, nah, 92. You're fine. It's just like, God fucking damn it. I am basic as 92. shit. 92. Uh, <laughs> I, I even I looked up like under a obscure. 90. I looked. No, that's not true. Um, <laughs> I even looked up like obscure, like puzzle games that I play that I love. And it's even like, yeah, this is like a 90 game. I'm like, why? It's, it's just a puzzle game. Um, I had an answer. Hold on. I can't think of it. I don't know. Probably like House Flipper. Let's be real. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there literally you go. any of the simulation games. They're kind of trash. Simulator, yeah. We'll accept that. All right. So, good a- yeah. Good answer. Don't, don't good patronize answer. me, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> the next question also comes from Derek. Sort of the, the flip side. What is the most overrated game of all time, in your opinion? Oh, boy. Derek says oh boy. he thinks it's Final Fantasy VII. I'm going to ban an answer for this one because everyone on the panel is going to say Breath of the Wild, so I'm banning that answer. <laughs> wow, was that say. wasn't what I thought you were going to okay. say. Okay, okay. I, I wasn't going to say I thought you were going to say Witcher 3 was banned. I'm also not. banning okay. The Witcher 3. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm not going to ban The Witcher 3, but I know Mike's going to pick it. But I am banning Breath of the Wild. Mm. All right, I'll Fair go enough. first. For me, and this answer is not going to be popular on this panel, I don't know, but Shadow of the Colossus. I don't like Shadow of the Colossus. I just could. I tried so hard. I tried so hard to get into it. I just can't do it. I can't do it. It feels like a game that I should like, but I think I need a little bit more. I need a little bit more to it. I understand it's an older game. I played the uh, the remaster. I think it was a remake or remaster. It was kind of 
Did we know what that? Does anyone know? It was the remake. Yeah, I guess it was a remake. So I played that. I actually, it was one of the only games in my life. I've probably pre-ordered six, seven games in my entire life. And that was one of them. Wow. I thought I was really going to like it. I tried so hard. I just couldn't get into it. I never played the original on PS2, so I didn't have that nostalgia for it. Playing the remake, thought I was going to love it, just didn't. Was really disappointed. I was like, damn, I just wasted 60 bucks. I, I, I can understand why people like it, but for me, like, there's just not enough there. It's a really empty, really empty world. There is, there are like no real systems in the game. The game is very, very bare bones. And I can understand that being something that people like about it, but I just, I, I couldn't get into it. Paul, what about you? Uh, yep. I'm going to go ahead and say an answer. It's going to get me uh, in some trouble here, but I find Skyrim to be a very overrated game. Uh, now, this is just my personal opinion, of course. Um, but I have tried to play and failed at playing Skyrim in uh, about a million different ways and times and on every different system. Uh, I just, I find the faces are too bland. The every, the, everyone's just saying random pre-recorded lines. I don't feel like the world is alive. I like, uh, in 2010, 2011 world, I do like that there's so much open space, but the open space is completely empty. Uh, I think, you know, obviously there's ogres and there's things, and it's not like the worst game ever made or anything, but I think, it, you know, people put, you know, tens of thousands of hours, that's probably, you know, a little over the top, but people put thousands of hours into this game. Uh, and no shade to them, uh, but I just find I wanted to feel like I was part of that world, and I either felt like I was in the middle of a big empty field, or I felt like I was in a city where nobody was real. I actually think that, and this is another really hot take, I think The Elder Scrolls Online is a better Elder Scrolls game than Skyrim. That is a scorching <laughs> hot take, and I could not disagree with you more, but go, go off wow. King. Whoa. I might, oh, I, I may, I may have to edit that part points. out. Daddy's mad. <laughs> I, I just, I'm also just, we've talked about this before, but I'm just not big on Bethesda games. So that's, that's a whole nother. I will, uh, I'll say experience. with you though, Matt, I, I, I like Fallout too. And that's the thing. I, I don't even mind the dead faces in Fallout because the world's supposed to feel dead. I feel like, but Skyrim, I feel like it's supposed to feel alive and it doesn't to me. I, whereas I think that works in Fallout because it's such a kind of a dead fucked up world. Everyone's emotions, I would imagine, are like totally shot. Um, and I will say, you know what? I uh, just a little aside. I do feel like I did feel like ESO's world was more alive. Maybe it's because there's more people running around. Maybe I don't know. Josh, what about you? What's your what's the most overrated game of all time in your opinion? That ass was going to be Breath of the Wild. You got me there. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to just kind of go overarching here and just say the new Assassin's Creed games. I think yeah, Odyssey, sir. which got lauded with a lot of praise, was dog shit. I hated it. They what a this, this, the story was not engaging uh, to me anyways. There was too much shit in the world. Agreed. Like if you're if you're anal as shit like me and want to collect everything, it just bothered me. Like I have other shit to do with my time. Like I like can't play be World of Warcraft. See, that's the thing though. That's an existing world. I'm gonna be done with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and it's gonna be over. I'm out of that world for yep. good. At least I, while I get it that. persists. And like I, that's what I for and, now. like. And like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I just, I wish we could get a little more focused with Assassin's Creed. Fuck's sake. Valhalla, I think some of the play times in that game were what, up to 70 hours almost? It's like, insane. I may be exaggerating, but it's like ridiculous. It was way Pair too long. it back a little bit. Like, Assassin's Creed 2 is so good because it told a story and it told a story well. And it had fun game systems that went along with it. This was just like, fuck it, go collect 10 bear pelts. Like, fuck it, I don't care to collect 10 bear pelts, bro. Uh, just, just get it out of here. <laughs> I think that's a good answer. I love Assassin's Creed, like the new ones, and I love Odyssey, but I do think that's a really good answer. I do think, I think that's I, a great answer. Matt, you, you told me to play Odyssey. I, tr I bought it on sale. I tried to play it. I put about 10 hours in, and I just felt like it was just a big world of nothing, and I oh, couldn't, I love couldn't it get my so interest. Much. Had, I had love it been it. a little more pared back and maybe a little bit of a smaller world with just more like insightful events happening in it i would have liked it a little bit more but it just felt like a whole lot of do nothing it felt like new world uh but in assassin's creed it just is <laughs> like what's going on in the world the damning damning review there felt like new world i won't get into it too much but valhalla is like that in that they paired a lot of stuff back but at the same time there aren't those meaningful events and it's not like this meaningful 
great story. It's just pared back, so it's less stuff. <laughs> like it's, but it's also a, a super long game. Like I, I was like thirty hours in, didn't feel like I was anywhere. And I was like, I, I'm just, not, I can't play this game anymore. No, I'm not going anywhere. And, and and also the change in the combat system too with the new games to me was a, a big mistake. I, I felt it was simple like keep it simple stupid like and i felt that worked for assassin's creed because the modus operandi of the game fucking assassinate people yeah like but in this it's like that's get fair. your fucking that's fair. shield in your axe and just, just i just like it's not for me anymore and like because like, you know assassin's creed i just want to assassinate that's fair i mean assassin's creed origins clearly tried to be the witcher 3 and they totally changed to just become the witcher 3 and yeah. I think they did a pretty good job of copying that, but if that's not what you want out of your Assassin's Creed game, then it's completely different from what you what you really want to get. Mike, what Definitely. about you? Oh, I have a list. <laughs> oh, here we go. Are they just my, a list of my to... favorite games? No, 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 no. No, I think, okay, if we're going off of IGN reviews, my number one from this year is Deathloop. I think that's way overrated. Um, but if we're talking, like, big time, oh, let's piss people off. Uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, I don't think it's good. I don't Agreed. care. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Oh, God. Let's see, what else? What else? <laughs> um, anything, I just think, okay. I just think Here, Zelda in general just, is overrated. Let's just I, I piss a... everyone off yeah. oh, no. at oh, no. once. Okay. okay. Anything from Hideo Kojima, I oh. do not care about. Oh. Yeah, my and man. I want to the craft, but I don't want to play. I do. Games. I, I I understand what he's doing. Yeah. I have tried my hardest to play any MGS game that he has had his hands on, and every time I stop playing after like two hours, I'm like, that was a waste of my time. <laughs> Come on, this is fun. Keep going until you. Get I wouldn't to say that. I wouldn't say that Witcher 3 is overrated. I think it was rated well for its time. I think now it's overrated for the people who want, you know, like a remaster of it. It if you're going to get a remaster, they have to fix the combat system. There's there's nothing If they fix that, then it's great. Then it's perfect. Then it's awesome. At the time, the combat system worked, but we've had better games with better combat systems now, so it's like, okay, that's fair. We need to you need to update that. Um, so I won't say that it's overrated. I think if it came out today, it'd be overrated. Um, Mario else, 64 came out today, it'd be overrated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know about that. That game is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be it. Okay. Okay. Well, you've offended enough people, so we, uh, we can probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's exactly. let's move on. Then. Oh, oh, I had one more. I had one more. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I had okay. one more. It's going to piss off. It's going to piss off Matt. Uh, they all the last do. Of us. Last of Us, yeah. <laughs> you, actually, the first Last of Us is goaded as fuck. I will not stand for this tragedy. The Last of Us 2 I haven't played. This no, was... I don't care for the first Last of Us. I think, I think it's boring. I'm I think the second reading... one seems a little more interesting and in like that they take some, some, some risks. I like, I like the yeah. idea of the second one more than the first one, actually. You know, I... I think the second one's better. I just yeah. think that they fucked up the story and should have told it in a different order, yeah. but we've had that conversation. I'm reading... uh, I think Last of Us 1 has a good story with really boring gameplay. I, I'm rereading the question right now. And it did say, what's the most overrated game of all time, in your opinion, actually? It didn't say, Mike, what are all your wrong opinions? But, you know, um, anyway. I, I love the dichotomy of Matt and Mike, because y'all two could not be more different in the games y'all enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Derek, Derek, it's on, if we lose listeners, it's on you for asking these questions, okay, buddy? <laughs> Derek, ask some more inflammatory questions next time. Please. I would really appreciate Derek, it. Derek's more. trying to get us in trouble here. All right. Yeah. Let's move on. It's time for Cash or Trash. It's been a while. Let's it's been go. two months. In Cash or Trash, we look at the major upcoming releases for the next two months. I'll name the releases and then the panelists, including myself, say whether it's their cash or trash. Each panelist can choose two caches. The rest must be trashed now we're gonna go in order from the beginning of november to the end of december i will warn you there is like a nothing <laughs> barely anything scheduled for december at this point it's very bare so there's not a lot going on in that month a lot of stuff ha that was supposed to be in this season has been moved to early 2022 so there isn't a lot going on but there are some big ones there are some big ones and so we'll come to those in a couple minutes here but we're going to start off not with a big one, but with one that I potentially think Mike 
might be cashing. And that's on November 4th. That's Just Dance 2022. <laughs> I'm saying uh, trash. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Is it to me? It's to yeah. you. Uh, skip me for a second. I'm, I'm looking at the song list. Yeah, I'm going trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit there's they no got song Michael. you can get to make me dance around my living room uh to a game but yeah, uh not they got me. a they got a han solo's uh i'm han solo in it i'm gonna well, have that, to I mean, cash that, no actually it's a trash <laughs> that's that would get me but i think it's a little past, <laughs> past the prime we'll have uh, alden ehrenreich uh, singing it instead of uh okay all right. So here, here's the thing. Like, I, I'm, I don't know how Just Dance works. I have Just Dance Unlimited, right? I don't know if I get access to the 2022 song list. Listen, Mike, do you like the, the fucking game or not? Let I me be like clear. This man just said that The Witcher 3 <laughs> is overrated, that fucking every game that you love is overrated. And here he is cashing out Just Dance. He has Just I'm Dance Unlimited. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, either way, I'm trashing it because there are better things on this list, all right, Matt. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whether or not I buy Just Dance 2022 is not the answer. Is not the question yeah. here. What do you <laughs> most prefer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, this is uh, th this is actually going to be the last Game Groups podcast. <laughs> we dissolve at this point. Uh, we gotta have a good night, everybody. Uh, if Naughty Dog made Just Dance, Mike might need to finally not buy a Just Dance installation. <laughs> I have nothing wrong with Na Naughty Dog. Did I say anything about Nathan Drake? No, I did not. Just the last of us. I did listen to your podcast talking about the movie with Paul, but that's another conversation. All right. It's a movie. It's not going to be good. Get out of here. That's always listening. It's going to be the greatest. It's winning Best Picture. I'm kidding. Yeah, put Chris Pratt in it. <laughs> All right. Jesus Christ. We're one game in. We're on the first game. All right. November 5th, Call of Duty Vanguard. I'm personally trash. trashing it. Trash. Get the fuck out of here, you oh. piece of shit. Fuck you, trash. Wow. Oh. Josh has <laughs> okay. got some feelings about that one. Did you want, if it had been good, would you have cashed it, Josh? No, it's World War II. I'm sick of fucking World yeah. War II. No, I, there's another game on here. Yeah, let uh, me get a... Yeah. Next year, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. That might possibly be a cash for me. Yeah, yeah. November 9th, Airborne Kingdom. I'm going to trash it. Uh, it looks really cool. It looks like my style of game, but I'm going to trash. I, I don't even know what it is, but I'm going to go ahead and trash it. I got the Vegas clue. Trash. I it's put this, city builder. Yeah, I put oh. this game on the list for, for Mike. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this one looked cool, but yeah, it's still trash. November 9, Soccer Manager 22. I'm kidding. It's Football Manager 22. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to trash this one. I care nothing about soccer. Uh, trash i've never played a football manager game in my life uh it's gonna be on game pass so i might like give it a shot because we've been talking about football manager a little bit so i might give it a shot but like i mean it's a trash it's not something i would ever put money in i think i'd rather wear wet jeans trash <laughs> november 9th I would rather get oh. my sleeves wet <laughs> washing the dishes also oh. november 9th forza horizon 5 now, I'll just get this out of the way now. I am going to trash it, although I do want to play it, but I am going to trash it. Here's the thing. We've talked about this before. What like what happens if this is on Game Pass? Can I am I no, no, no. It, it? It's really not like that. It's just like, is this your winner for the next two months or your yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I'm cashing it. Obviously, I'm gonna fucking cash it. It's got 92 <laughs> on Open Critic. This sh it's like the next yeah. gen Forza. It's got everything fucking right about it. If you like Forza Horizon, it's not changing everything, uh, but it's just like the perfect Forza Horizon. And boy, oh boy, I'm excited for next Tuesday for play this game. Yep. I'm excited for you, Paul. Like, I'm so Thank excited you. for you to play this game. I'm, I've been really having a hankering for Forza, and then I keep thinking, like, I tried to install 4 recently, and then I was like, eh, you know what? Like, I just might as well wait a little bit, so. Mike and Josh? Uh, you know, this game has been sneaking up on me. Put my Honda Civic in it, please. I'm going cash. Oh, yeah, baby. Wow. Let's I fucking play a little Forza, Forza road trip. We'll, uh, we'll drive around Mexico together. I get some tattoos in Tijuana. I, I feel like love Forza. you didn't look far enough in the list. <laughs> no, no, I, I just... I've, I've seen it. Oh, I've okay. seen it. I know I have, I have, I have reasons. I have reasons. I'm very curious. Okay. Mike. Uh, trash. All right. <laughs> our, I'll play it. Our, trash. our final November 9th game, 
Jurassic World Evolution 2. I'm trashing it. I think it's going to outsell everything on November 9th. <laughs> no, trash. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, I, I I I think that it, it could be a, a good game. Uh, no, I'm. Uh, I'm you Jeff trash. Goldblum. That's my. That was my attempt at Goldblum. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to trash football. Uh, Manager. <laughs> Wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we are in the list. Oh my god! No, yeah, I'm not playing. Famous I'm soccer that, coach uh, Jeff Goldblum. I'm waiting for that RPG uh, game. I feel like when zombies ran their course in like the 2013 to like we had every zombie game known really came life? out. I, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, look at this past year. Um, that said, I feel like we've ran our course with fucking dinosaurs trash. No, I don't think we've had enough dinosaur games. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is literally the only fucking franchise. That I'd, I'd rather play C- Cabela's eight. <laughs> wow. Wow. Cabela, Cabela? All right. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know Mike's answer, but I assume he's trashing. Are you trashing it, Mike? I said trash. Okay. I said trash. November 11th, Breakwaters. Is this like a, a noir mystery? What is this? It's a I'm survival it game on islands. Oh, it just showed me real pictures of Breakwaters when I Google imaged it. <laughs> this looks oh, like doo-doo trash. Fuck. <laughs> this, this was something that actually looked pretty cool to me. Uh, I'm going to trash it, though. <laughs> trash. Mike? Oh, I said this looks like doo doo trash. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm cashing this. I'm cashing breakwaters. Whoa. I'll be damned. Look at him go. Online co op, procedurally generated survival type of game with really awesome water physics. We don't get enough awesome water physics. Reminds me a lot of Valheim. Only there's Listen, like this man, big I focus play on this water. Game with you. Yeah, I will play this game with you, man. This game, like. <laughs> this game is going to <laughs> surprise people. It's not going to be. I don't. It's. I'm not saying it's going to be Valheim, but this game is going to surprise people. There are going to be really cool gifts and videos that come out of people doing cool shit with water in this game. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, when does this come out? Like, Some water like, sports. Like, November, like 11th, November 11th. I googled. This comes waters. out November 11th. And it's just okay. a picture of literal, uh, like, outlets of water. That's what, I got that's what I got, too. Yeah, I went to Google Images. Uh, I just got pictures of outlets of water. Scroll, it's the fourth row. <laughs> there it finally is. No, this looks um, cozy as hell. It reminds me of, like, uh, the Sea of Thieves. Like, it's not going to be a good game, but it's going to be a fun game. And I think that is uh, Valheim something I'm interested in. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I'm not going to cash it, but, uh, you know, you send me, a, you, you gift me a copy, Matt. I'll be playing this with you for sure. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> November 11th, we have Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition. I'm trashing it. Damn. Trash. Uh, I can't play it on PC. There's like, well, San Andreas is free on Game Pass, but not on PC. So there's no fucking way I'm putting money into this game. Trash. Uh, Rockstar is going to release Grand Theft Auto Sudoku before it has to release uh, a new Grand Theft Auto game. <laughs> Trash. Wouldn't that be a new Grand Theft Auto game, though? Oh, shit, you're right. Fuck. Yeah. Don't give my ideas. <laughs> I think it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll buy it on sale at some point uh, if it ever goes on sale. November not, uh, November 12th, rather. Shin Megami Tensei 5. I'm trashing it. I think it looks interesting, but it's only on Switch, and I'm just, I don't know. Not, I'm trashing it. I don't have a Switch, so I'm trashing it. <sighs> I'm trashing it because, uh, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. and, yep, that same. In the garbage it goes. November nineteenth. Welcome, J- Welcome to the Goodnight Grooves podcast. Uh, we love JRPGs in this in this realm here. <laughs> I do like JRPGs. No, I just kidding, don't yeah. care for this. <laughs> it's the replay. It's the real problem. Where Matt and I will talk about the review of a JRPG, and then we'll be like, "Well, uh, you know, we just don't care." So, <laughs> moving on. That's not true for all of them. Yeah, not true for all of them. All right, November nineteenth, Battlefield twenty forty two. Josh. Boys, what the fuck do you think? <laughs> I am cashing this bad boy. I'm gonna get hours worth out of this. I don't know how long it's a cash, easy cash. How many cash do we get? Two. Two. Oh, yeah. I thought we got one. Okay. You want to go back and, and, and <laughs> watch something you didn't, you didn't before? Let me think on it. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right I'm Hold also it. cashing this. Uh, wow. If Battlefield 2042 is good. I'm more excited for this than Halo Infinite, but if it ends up shitting the bed, I would just trade that shit out real quickly for Halo Infinite. For Halo Infinite, yeah. But but <laughs> I am more excited by by Battlefield. Paul, what about you? 
no interest uh you know it, lo it looks like a really good game but i i just i i've tried playing battlefield like these big scale modern battlefields and i just it's too much going on for me i just i didn't get the feel for it uh you know if it goes on a good sale i might pick it up and play with you guys but it's not it, when they fix a lot of the bugs too but eh, it's just not something i ever buy we've got game pass it'll go on ea play at some point so uh, that's true i'll play it on ea play then mike we were coming back to you now yeah no it's trash for me i i don't hate battlefield games i just don't love them because they don't love me half the time so <laughs> yeah um fair play i'll probably play it unless it's actual dog water um just to play with you guys but hey hey uh guess guess where you can watch the uh gg review of uh battlefield 2042 right here on the uh, good night groups baby uh love it when love it, to see when it. it comes out coming out soon. very good that's that's an aggressive promise. That is. Uh, don't look at my broken promises. Day one, November 19th. We're getting an advanced <laughs> copy, boys. <laughs> I'm, I, uh, GG Replay, Midnight Groups is not responsible for lies we tell on the podcast. No, the other November 19th game that will, com that will compete with Battlefield is Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I'm trashing yeah, it. Two. I'm excited. Yeah. I probably won't pick this one up, though, unless it scores really high. But I, I'm, I'm somewhat interested. Not enough, though. Trash. Uh, well, obviously, I'm all out of cash, but I'll, you know, say trash. Honestly, you know, these two audiences will definitely intersect really well with one another. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would uh, I'd fucking love to play this game. This looks so cool. It looks like a really fun return to just some fun Pokemoning. I know, obviously, game, we've been through it before. Game Freak could do way more than they're doing, but this looks like a lot of fun. I would play it if I had a Switch, but I don't. I'm not going to buy one, so trash for me uh this is the big money cash um Ooh, knew it gross. knew it Good choice i mean i was gonna buy it it's i was gonna buy it regardless i've been waiting to play diamond pearl for a while again i play platinum i think it's the best pokemon game that they've ever made people will argue that with me that's fine i know that a lot of the entries have been good i will I just, argue that with i you. think yeah that's fine <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, it's my cash. I plan on playing it uh, on my stream. So, ooh, nice! Check that out. White Ghost One One Seven. At Twitch TV. <laughs> <laughs> November twenty third, Final Fantasy fourteen Endwalker. I'm trashing it. Don't play this game. Uh, I don't. I'm saying I don't play this game. I'm not telling yeah. people don't play this game. <laughs> this game. You are the you are the reverse uh, um, Asmongold right now. Don't play this game. Don't play it. Uh, in a lot of ways, more ways than one. You're the reverse Asmongold. Um, partly because you have no money. <laughs> well, like, I also wow. shower. I also shower. So. <laughs> you also oh, shower. God. I know. I just thought it'd be easy to go for like the you're cooler than him. Yeah. So I thought. Yeah, those eyebrows um, are pretty sturdy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I'll say. Listen. Uh, uh, I don't give a fuck. I did think I was going to re-download uh, FF14 just because my computer is way better now, so I might like give it a shot now that it won't be like look like. Oh yeah, that PS3 me. game is really demanding on the on the PC. Well, it was <laughs> demanding on my like 2012 MacBook, but now it actually will run, so uh, I I will give it a shot. But uh, I won't be playing Endwalker unless I get through the original base game and Heaven's Ward, which I fucking won't. So, which I hear is free. <laughs> yeah, up to level 60. Mm -hmm. Up to level 60 even, yeah. It's crazy. Right. Uh, and, yeah, uh, I mean, as much as I like to pretend I'm going to get through that, you know, through to it, uh, who knows if that'll ever happen. Uh, so it's got to go in the garbage. I'm sorry, Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah big cool. trash. December I'll, I'll 2nd. Like 14. <laughs> December 2nd, we have Solar Ash. I'm trashing it. Just don't think it's really my thing, but it looks like it'll be good, just not my thing. Uh, yeah, trash, 100%. <laughs> uh i i really like this game i really want to play this game but i can't make it my cash uh partly just because it's not gonna be something i i'm not compelled to buy this on release i don't buy a lot of stuff on release and i doubt this is gonna be like a fucking day one game pass so it's an annapurna thing so uh i will play this eventually but i'm not rushing out to do it but it looks phenomenal to me way more interesting to me than hyper light drifter yeah i'm gonna trash this honestly annapurna you've been burning me a little too much lately Whoa. i agree a I little agree. bit too much guys uh you're breaking my heart <laughs> favorite, favorite dev out here 
All right, well, let's really? reinvigorate your heart here. With December 8th, we have Halo Infinite. Cash. cash. That was a quick cash. Two quick two cashes. Two easy yeah. cashes. Easy, easy cash. This you know game, why? Because it's this, free. It's free. It's free, so I'm definitely <laughs> going to be fucking playing the asset of this game. It's free. It's fucking... They've nailed it. I, again, when I say Halo Infinite, I mean the multiplayer of Halo Infinite. I mean, to be fair, I have yeah. Game Pass, so I'm going to play the campaign probably one day on there. Um, but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in a finally having Halo back in multiplayer, free to play. This is going to blow up. People are going to play the shit out of this game. Uh, I, I think this could be the next big huge shooter thing and i'm so fucking i know man, i'm so excited for this like i like the hype has been building over the last few months and I, I i was tentative before that because i was like maybe it'll suck but now i know almost with with it without almost without a shadow of a doubt this is gonna be a really good game so i'm fucking hyped i really Just, hope so i would love to be obsessed with halo again because it's been so so long i would love to like be listening, obsessed listening with to you say if battlefield 2042 comes out like it's good i'm not gonna play halo like fuck off halo is gonna blow your mind you're gonna throw bf 2042 in the dumpster not josh josh is gonna play the shit out of bf 42 but matt <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be eclipsed very quickly i think by how good halo all right is. we'll see we'll see yeah, this is one of those situations where it came down to the fact that I have always loved Battlefield, even through its like World War predecessors, and Halo has burned me one too many times. Uh, That's fair. Now I, I'm gonna dig around in the trash like some sort of raccoon to like you know pull it out uh, and you know find it and play it, but it's going in the trash, unfortunately. Mike, uh, I cash. You cash right at the beginning. Just, I didn't, just didn't know if you had any thoughts. Yeah, no, I'm curious about Josh's statement of Halo burning him. Which ones? Uh, Halo Five, definitely. Halo Five, five absolute yeah, trash. Five. And I mean, I, there's parts I of Halo Four I like, though, right? <laughs> but but the but the Halo Four campaign was absolute dog shit, and the multiplayer yeah. certainly was not built to last, and the Forge was not good either. Oh, see, I I I know that it's okay. not built to last, but God, four multiplayer was my shit. Like those loadouts in Halo, I know it's not what people want out of Halo, and it's not what we're getting now. But I fucking was obsessed with that shit. DMR loadouts. Oh, there there were th there were things I liked about four for sure. It's just yeah. uh, ba Battlefield has been a little more consistent for me, even in the times I wasn't super crazy really? about it. Consistent in that it always launches. Like Re really consistent more in <laughs> <laughs> consistent so much as theme, really, because I, yeah, I not like World yeah. War II theme. Shout out to you, Vanguard. Eat my ass. Yep. yep. All right. And the final product, <laughs> and I say product because it's not a game. This is December TBA. We don't know a date yet. This is the Steam Deck. I'm trashing it because I I just I know I won't get it. I think it's an awesome product, but I know I'm probably not gonna get it. So I'm trashing it. Yeah, same, uh, same same vein for me. And also, I don't even play handheld games ever any anymore, even on like Switch. I've tried and I just can't trash. I mean, I'm going to trash it. I'm a huge, like you, Matt, I'm, I mean, even more so. I'm a huge, huge proponent of the Steam Deck. I fucking love this product, and I think it's going to be a huge disruptor. But that being said, even, even though I'm not going to buy it right now, I even still think I might not buy it in the future just because I'm finding now that I'm an old guy a little bit, I have trouble playing on a smaller screen, a lot of different kinds of games. I think that even in handheld, I think I have to play very specific types of games. And that's kind of why I went in the laptop route now and I move that around the house a little bit. It's kind of like my giant fucking handheld experience uh, just because I found playing, uh, you know, even like streaming games to my phone and streaming games to a tablet or something with like xCloud and stuff. It was just a little too cramped for me. I, I think I need like 15 inches at least. And the, yeah, that's <laughs> no context on that. Daddy, <laughs> Mike, I'm gonna say trash, but also I feel like we're gonna see this next cash or trash. Ooh, okay, uh, like New World, the New World effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Yeah, Jesus I, Christ. I, I was talking yeah. before we started the show. I was talking to to I think it was Josh, and I said the fact that it doesn't have a date yet and it's in December feels like it could be pushed, but at the same time, it's like hardware. It's not software where you can just easily push it. Like it's, I don't know. It, we'll have to see, but I just feel like it, it would be weird to push a piece of hardware back when it's scheduled for next month. Like it's, there's a mm -hmm. lot of moving parts. They could do it if they don't have the chips. That's true. But they did say yeah. they aren't having supply chain issues. So we'll, We'll have to see. Well, everyone says that. Yeah, so. that's what they say until the day <laughs> comes out, and then they go, whoopsie doodle. 
right. <laughs> that's, that's a direct whoopsie quote doodle. from uh, from Square Enix. Gabe and uh, yeah. what, whoopsie yeah. doodle. Whoopsie doodle. All right, let's end the show. We're going to end this week's show with a short roast. I'm going to give the panel a game or franchise. In this case, it's a company. And they're going to give it a one-line roast. They may love this company. I don't think that's the case. But now is the time to give it a knockout punch. Welcome to the roast of Epic Games. I'm going to roast them first. I'll give my roast first. Epic has really tried to position the Epic Game Store as the anti-Steam or the answer to Steam. After Steam recently announced that they'd be taking blockchain and NFT games off their store, Tim Sweeney publicly took to Twitter and invited those developers to the Epic Game Store. So I have a simple request. Can Steam please remove the shopping cart feature for just like one week so we can finally get that on the Epic Game Store? <laughs> nice. nice. Mike, your roast. Well, you know, I went to Vegas last week, and I have to say, the way that Epic kind of shells itself out, I've seen less desperate people on the strip at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Paul, your roast. See, here's the thing. I had a really great joke, but I didn't trademark it, and now Epic stole it and they put it in Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> so, didn't good. even change anything. Didn't even make any changes. And Josh, your roast. Boys, I'm sorry. I struggle with this one. Uh, so we're going to get super specific into North Carolina here. Uh, you know, it's interesting. A Pepsi company uh, comes from North Carolina, Charlotte to be specific. Shout out to Brad's some- drink. And uh, yet somehow, uh, Epic Games is still the worst thing to come out of the Carolinas. Wow. Hating on Pepsi. Pepsi. That's uh, <laughs> not cool on, in the group uh, world here to hate on Pepsi, I'll be honest with you right now. Epic All is the, uh, Epic is the guy. Pepsi is to Coke as Epic is to, uh, to Valve. No, no, that's hard. No comment. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here on the Game Groups podcast, the all encompassing gaming podcast from the Good Night Groups. If you really like the show, and we hope you really like the show, we think you're going to really like the show. We encourage like you to, the show. Yes, like the show. We encourage you to check out our Patreon at <laughs> patreon.com says Good Night Groups, where we currently have three different tiers available. Any and all support is greatly appreciated, and will, it will go a long way in improving everything here at the Good Night Groups. The three dollar plus tier will get you access to this show, Game Groups. <laughs> two Sorry, days can we early. stop the recording for a second? I'm getting a little <laughs> hot and bothered here. That's just uh, I'm, I'm, I'm mercy me. I find myself having the vapors from the value of that three dollar plus tier. Wow, that sounded scripted. Uh, a special shout out to our patrons currently supporting us in the five dollar plus tier: Ishmael S. and Rachel S. A round of applause, please. We also ask that you take a couple minutes to drop a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or leave a like and comment on the YouTube video. Everything helps. Make sure to check out goodnightgroups.com for all of our content, where you'll find the blog, GG Replay, the podcast, game reviews, and more coming soon. And when I say coming soon, I mean be on the lookout. Red hot. That's how soon it is. Whatever Guys, that means. Spicy. Any last thoughts? Spay and neuter your parents. <laughs> that'll do it for us here today <laughs> gentlemen thank you so much for joining me take care everyone that <laughs> goodbye